The Wizard That Destroyed the World by Wizard of Chaos The Time Lord I marched into the alchemist shack, pushing through the bright red door. Knickknacks and paddywax as far as the eye could see littered the floors and walls of the shack. In the middle of it, barely visible to the clutter, was the alchemist. Ah, wizard, I haven't seen you since magic school. How are... I've tried everything, I shouted, interrupting him. Every spell, every trick, I can't fix it. Slow down, slow down. Can't fix what? I took my satchel and poured out shattered pieces of ice on the short table the alchemist was sitting at. He exhaled smoke from his hookah before speaking. What exactly am I looking at here? The ice prince's heart. I shattered the ice prince's heart. I need a way to fix it. Well, this isn't exactly fixable. What? We could try to go back in time by asking the Time Lord. However, he's in a different plane. Okay, how do I teleport there? Teleport? One does not simply teleport to the different plane. This isn't just another simple dimension, my dear wizard. No, no. You have to travel there by mine, as the monks do. Hey, don't you have a little brother who's a monk? That would take centuries. That's way too long. I need to fix this now, I yelled. Does your roommate know you're here? Said the alchemist, looking around as if my terrifying roommate was going to pop out of nowhere. He's at work, hunting some level two demon or something. Is there a way to get to the Time Lord or what? Well, there is a way. The alchemist led me to the back room of his shack. The room was filled with pillows with tassels on them. Looks comfortable. Are we going to nap our way out of this like in school? I snarked. The alchemist took out a cake that says eat me on it. Okay, wingnut, if you want to get there quickly, these can get you there without all the years of training your mind. Perfect. I grabbed a fistful of cake to take a bite. The alchemist grabbed my hand before I could put anything in my mouth. At, at, I would tear off a little piece at a time. This stuff can really warp your mind in ways you're not prepared for. I took off a little piece of the eat me cake, taking a bite. Nothing's happening, I said. Really? Hmm. Oh, uh, well, take another piece, then. I took another piece of the cake and ate it. Still nothing. Are you sure this stuff works? Yes, uh, well, just take one more piece. I ate another piece. It's still not doing anything. This stuff sucks. Okay, lay down. I'll look at the spell book this came out of. The alchemist got up and went into the another room. Don't move. I'll be back in two seconds. I lay down on the pillow, looking up the, at the ceiling for one, two. That's all the patience I have. I went up to fill up some water at the sink. When the world around me started warbling. Um, alchemist, something's happening, I yelled. Oh, uh, the book says that you were supposed to eat one bite of the cake. Then wait for about half an hour. You ate three bites all at once. Um, oops, called the alchemist from another room. Oops, oops. I began hearing the whispers of hundreds of voices in my head. I this is nothing like can. teleporting. I don't think I, I like it. I screamed over the voices. You have Don't no freak out. If you know. just lay back down, said the alchemist. I However, I didn't even take one step before I dropped the glass of water, which shattered on the top of the floor. The alchemist's shack turned into a giant ocean I fell right into. I held my breath as I sunk. 
No matter how much I kicked and kicked, I kept sinking. I finally let go of my breath, but instead of rushing a water into my lungs, I found I could breathe perfectly fine. I don't know where I am. I can't teleport out of here, I screamed. Don't teleport. It's okay, I heard the alchemist say. Unlike teleporting, your body is still here in the shack with me. How do I get out of here? Mind over matter, wizard. Mind over matter. What does that even mean? Just focus and... His voice cut out as the rush of water and voices in my head got louder. And what? And what? I yelled. I wandered around the bottomless ocean. Dozens of fish swam past me. What is your purpose? Asked the porpoise, swimming up beside me. What? I yelled over the other voices in my head. Porpoise, do you have a porpoise for coming here? T time Lord. Time Lord? I need to go back in time and not do what I did. The porpoise looked porpoisely before speaking. You are pushing forward while trying to go back. Let the current take you wherever it may lead. The current of time moves all. However, what you're looking for might not be where you'll be. I let go. The current whipped me backward, dragging me in circles as I spun round and round. I saw all the twinkling stars floating around me. Was I... Was I always in space? The next moment, I blinked and looked around. I saw pillows with tassels on them. This place was familiar, but wasn't. A familiar face peered over me. Hey, dude, are you okay? I looked over at the puddle of water on the kitchen floor and the broken glass. My eyes moved rapidly. I, I don't... That's when I realized I was gripping you my hand over my heart, panting really, really loudly. Okay, well, I'm going to call your roommate, said the familiar man. My roommate's face flashed in my mind. The eye patched across one of his red eyes. His long, dark hair. His face was in a permanent scowl. No, don't! He'll be mad, I yelled. Yeah, I don't want to invoke his wrath either, but I think I gave you too much, and I need help calming you down. No! Hey, where are you going? Don't stand up! Before I knew it, I was at a barely familiar red door, pushing it open. A wide area of red flooring and black trees littered the outside. A train track was moving under my feet. I grabbed onto the edge of the red door, pulling myself back onto the train before shutting it. I moved through the train cart. Animals in fancy dress suits and ties all sat in the train carts. They stopped what they were doing, their shadowy faces and wide yellow eyes staring at me. Something does Something doesn't belong. They all whispered loudly. Would you happen to know where you're going? Asked the owl conductor. Little lost dear. I need to find the Time Lord. I shouted over all the voices. I need to go back in time to stop what I have done. Who? Asked the owl conductor. The Time Lord to save the Ice Prince. Who? The Ice Prince. I yelled, getting impatient. Do you know his name? Asked the owl conductor. He has a name, you know. You have a name. I, I don't. He's just the ice prince. Names aren't important. Who? Screw you, that's who. But before I can turn away, the owl conductor put a claw on my shoulder, stopping me. I think you are looking for this. She handed me a ticket with a picture of a clock on it. I stared into the clock until it became 3D. When I looked back up, I had begun falling into the void, littered with nothing but clocks. My back hit hard onto one of the huge clocks. Ouch! I looked up into the face of a Time Lord. He was tall and seemed to be standing in the middle of the void with no problem. What do you seek here? said the Time Lord. I need to go back in time. 
I need to stop from shattering the Ice Prince's heart, I explained. Back in time? There is no such thing as back in time. Time does not move forward and backwards as people on your plane would perceive it to. Time is all around you, not behind or in front of you. Okay, how do I prevent the Ice Prince's heart from shattering? You cannot. What has happened has simply happened. There is no taking back. There is no backwards or forward in time. No, that's not fair! I screamed, stomping my foot. That's not fair! That's not fair! That's not- <laughs> My tantrum was interrupted when my foot broke through the glass of the winding clock. I began falling. A hand slapped me across my cheek. Wizard, what the hell? I look up into the angry face of my demon hunter roommate as he held me in his arms. I looked around. We were in the middle of the forest, filled with canopies of trees. Where are we? I asked. You're lucky I can track you. Don't you ever, ever take something given to you by an alchemist who dropped out of magic school ever again. I felt tears well up my eyes. I, I don't. I'm so alone. No one would care if I lived or died. I just wanted him back. I'm so alone. I sobbed. The next minute, my demon hunter roommate hugged me in his arms. You're not alone, he said. Don't you dare ever say you're alone. Thank you for listening to The Wizard That Destroyed the World. If you want to keep up with The Wizard That Destroyed the World, follow the Discord in the link below. See you all Saturday on The Witching Hour.